Hello everybody and welcome back to the pop-up life channel if you're new to the channel I'm Travis I'm Brooklyn and although we see the camper actually set up behind us we are not camping today we just have it set up underneath our barn here um, making a few changes just doing some minor things uh, so it's ready to go the next time we decided to go camping yeah. I wanted to take this opportunity this video today to kind of give you an idea of some upcoming trips we've got planned. Um, we're going to be trying to do a lot of campground reviews for every place we go. Oh, so yeah. you can kind of, you know, know what's coming up as far as those campground reviews go. And we also want to take an opportunity to show you a little bit of the renovations we did inside this camper here and talk about just the camper itself some changes we made right. before we even went on our first camping trip right i think that is totally lacking campground reviews have you noticed that every time we try to find a new campground so we're really excited to be able to provide some of those for y'all and let you see what's good about a campsite and what's not so great right. so i'm excited yeah, about there's not those. a lot of, of, of campground review videos out there no. and i know ours are going to be you know, mainly regional. We're not going to just pack up and haul buggy to Montana or Wyoming uh, <laughs> with a pop-up. But uh, as we'll try, you know, most of our camping is going to be done here in Georgia and Florida, uh, maybe even Alabama a little bit here and there. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be fairly regional, but it'll still give you an idea of what we think of these campgrounds. We right. still need to come up with a, uh, a rating system for... Uh, Mm -hmm. for each campground i'm thinking maybe we do like a one to five scale or one to ten scale like uh sticks of firewood like so we give it like <laughs> eight, i'll hold them up you yeah. just give me some sticks and i'll hold them eight up. sticks of firewood okay pretty, that would be a pretty yeah. good rating so maybe we'll come up with some kind okay. of rating system there to kind of generalize everything so right, let's talk about um what we've got at least planned okay. throughout the end of the year right. uh places we're planning on going um Starting out, we're probably, it's, it's kind of cool here, but. Uh, uh, I'm still sweating. Yeah, but it, it, we, you know, looks like we're going to have temperatures mainly in the 70s, uh, and then they'll start dropping off even more into um, October. So I think we're going to plan at least one more trip uh, down to the beach. We haven't took the camper, the pop-up camper, down to the beach yet. We've been right. to the beach earlier this year before we got the camper. So gonna try to plan a little quick beach trip sometime soon okay and then we've got some more trips planned to the mountains yeah um, we're going to black rock mountain state park which we've never been there never been it's there supposed to be just absolutely beautiful views up there that's a little bit i think it's between clayton and dillard it's kind, up there kind of northeast uh georgia mountains so to mm -hmm. say uh we got that plan we also got another beach trip planned to Jekyll Island Campground, yes. which my parents go to a lot. They really like that, or my mom at least goes there a lot. Right. What else we got planned? We got a. Um, We're a, a, going to Hard Labor Creek. Hard, is, is it Hard Labor Creek or Hard Labor? It's a state park. Yeah. Sort of near Madison, Georgia, so near Athens. Yeah. Someone was telling me that was where, when the COVID thing first started, that's where they put a lot of people to isolate <laughs> them. Hopefully, uh, all that. I don't think going. they're there. All that's gone by now. Apparently, that's like a great place for horses. We are actually staying in the equestrian loop. Okay. And I asked, I said, oh, are there going to be horses near us? Because my children are loud and don't want to spook any horses. And they said, no, it's nothing like that. You're, um, the stables are off, but this is called the equestrian loop. She said it's really well maintained and a lot of privacy. So our spots are really big. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, so that's we'll not see. in the mountains, but it, it's it's north of us, which is always it's be cool, cool. cooler yeah. than here. Mm -hmm. So hard is it hard labor state park? Just hard labor. It's a state park. Okay. I don't know what the rest of the words are. Though. Okay, something about hard. So that's labor. close to Madison. We'll be going there. We also got another long trip uh, planned to Vogel State Park. Yes. And uh, by long, you mean like it's far away, or we're staying there a long time? Staying there longer than when we usually oh, stay at mm -hmm. some of these places. Yeah. Uh, I grew up going there. We grew up going to the North Georgia Mountains for vacation all the time, and uh, I did used, not used to go to Vogel <laughs> all the time. And it is, uh, it's you know, it seems like they've made a lot of improvements over the years. Yeah. And we're really looking forward to going there. Mm -hmm. um, where else? We're staying almost a week, aren't we? Close to it. Close Listen, to it. Listen, you pack the same amount of stuff to stay two nights. I feel like as you do five nights, you might as well stay. Yep, it's just as easy. And every time we pack up, Abram goes, "I wasn't ready to leave." <laughs> So we're we're gonna see if he's ready to leave or not in this long trip. And then one we haven't booked yet that we want to do is uh, we want to try this place called Little Talbot State Park, which mm -hmm. is uh, 
down there between Amelia Island and Jacksonville kind of. Mm -hmm. We were in Amelia Island earlier this year before we bought the pop-up and uh, we kind of ran across this, maybe we had bought the pop-up. We were scouting out campsites the on the yeah. way home and mm -hmm. uh, found this little quaint state park right on the water there. Yes. Uh, it's kind of backwoodsy, it's nothing fancy, but the, the views are... Um, They're beautiful. Yeah. And there's like 10 pop-ups. There's we, a lot of pop-ups Every time we're like, pop-up, pop-up, we count a bunch. So we feel we right at home out. there. Supposed to be some really good fishing there. <laughs> The only thing is that I could see where it would be a, a mosquito den for sure. Yes. So we want to wait till it cools off uh, really good before we head down there. Mm -hmm. That's the good thing about Jekyll. I heard that they spray at the campground for mosquitoes because Jekyll is right near the water, right near the beach. And a lot of people have said they were really excited because you didn't deal with as much pest pressure there. Yep. So that should be good. That'll be nice. So we got at least... I think five or six trips planned. Uh, our goal was to go at least once a month, but uh, it seems like what we're planning here, we're gonna try to go maybe even twice a month. Uh, Not three times. I feel like every weekend you're texting me, you're like, hey, can we get a, can we get a spot? Which has been a real challenge, I would say. I had no idea. Sometimes whenever we were trying to find a spot, um, I had to call up to six or seven campgrounds before we found a spot. So many people were sold out. I don't know if you've ever gone camping. I don't think this has been a problem in the past, but if you check any state park, especially North Georgia, yeah. it is so, they said this is their, you know, top peak season. So I'm a, we're trying to fit more in, but it's been a little difficult. Oh, and the most one I'm really excited about is we're going to Fort Wilderness. Fort too, Wilderness, yeah, yeah. Later in the year. Yeah. I yeah. don't even know that we'll go to Disney World. I love Disney World. Travis wants me to just, we're just going to pass over that. I love it. But I think I've read so many campground reviews. I've watched tons of videos. I don't even think we're going to have to go to the park. Like there's so much to do there. So I'm so excited about that. Yeah, that one's going to be fun. And uh, it, the weather should be nice. Yeah. The time we go, it shouldn't be too hot. So uh, I had forgot about that one. But uh, that Oh, and a little tiny, we're trying to plan a little trip to Chi Hall too. Yeah, which is right up the road from us. It's kind of a small scale zoo, but they we checked out their campground this past weekend. They got a nice little campground yeah, there. Nice. And uh, that would be a little quick short trip. But mm -hmm. well, as we've learned, you know, like like you said, it, it's hard to it's easy with the pop up to just pick up and go decide on a Friday you'll go and it's raining underneath the barn here. I'm sorry if that that makes it a little hard to hear. We'll but, talk real loud. Uh with COVID, camping is more popular than ever, and right. all these places are booked. So, the pop-up makes it really easy. Just pick up and go. You know, we got almost everything we need inside of there. We just mm -hmm. have to pack a little bag of clothes. Problem is, a lot of these campgrounds are booked months in advance, so it can be tough sometimes to find a That's spot right. yes. uh, to go. So we kind of the balancing act there uh, of doing that. I, I imagine in years where. We don't have this pandemic going on and everybody's right. not easier. trying to be outside. You can just pick up and yes. decide where you want to go at a drop of a hat. And, and that's kind of one reason we got the campers because we can uh, just right. on a whim take a quick just vacation. Go. Right. Anyway, so that's what we've got coming up. So you'll see campground reviews for all those places we mentioned. And we might even, uh, you know, have a wild hair and throw another one in there too here and there. I hope so. Uh, so let's take you... Let's start on the outside of the camper, okay. show you a few changes we made, talk about a few more changes we want to make, and then we'll go inside and Brooklyn can tell you about all the renovations she okay. did in there. Sounds good. Okay, so let's start on the outside here, which we haven't made near as many changes as the inside. Let's start with the awning here. So we did have to put a new awning on here. The good thing was the rail, if you can see way up top there, where the awning slides into was already there. Uh, but when we went and actually when we went and looked at this thing, the old awning, as we were trying to, uh, as they were trying to show me how to extend it and get it out, the old awning just kind of took a poop on us. And uh, so, good thing it did it then instead of when we were out there camping. So we bought this online. I can't exactly remember where we bought it, but it's a Domatic awning, and I actually like the way On this. The website. Yeah, I actually like the way uh, this one works a lot better than the old one that was on here. Works really nice. The only thing we had to screw into the camper were these little black pieces right here which holds this vertical bar. And uh, really, really enjoyed this awning. First time we went, we didn't have an awning and that was a big mistake. So, like the awning, we put that on there. That was probably about a $300 investment, but well worth it. Very sturdy, heavy duty awning there. 
some things that I'm planning on doing. If we look underneath here, we'll see there's a propane tank and there's a battery there. And you can run certain features of the pop-up off the propane or the battery, but we just haven't used them. And I just don't see where we're going to use them. So I'm going to remove that propane tank and that battery there and uh, either give myself more room for my bike rack, which goes off the back of my truck. I got a special little hitch. I'll have to show you that set up in another video, but I'm going to get rid of this tank and this battery here. And we're either going to put some a storage box right there on the rack or just have more room for our bicycles. Haven't decided yet, but that's kind of a wasted space currently. So we need to take advantage of that with the pop up. And then on around here to the back side, something else I'm planning on doing. Just a quick note, I did take off the Fleetwood tire cover and put me a nice UGA tire cover on there, go dogs. And right here, you can see this back bumper on it. I've tried to hook some stuff up to it uh, to make it where I could put a hitch on there, but it's pretty thin and flimsy. I think I'm going to take it to the welding shop down the road and get them to make me a nice sturdy bumper so I could put something on the back of it. A storage rack, maybe move my bicycles back here, something like that. I think it should be pretty easy to do. I'd like to have a solid uh, bumper, a lot better than what that is. That thing there's pretty flimsy. You can almost bend it with your hands. So that is what I got going as far as the outside goes. Can't see the top now, but I'd eventually like to be able to put a kayak rack or something on the top there. I think that would be pretty cool. Um, that's all I've got going on as far as the outside goes. Most of the changes have been on the inside and uh, we'll walk in there and let Brooklyn tell you okay. about that. Hey, so the one thing we forgot to mention earlier is that this is a 2008 Fleetwood Westlake and it was in great shape like working condition everything no leaks or bumps or anything like that so we were really just able to sort of take it and go and we could have left everything how it was i just like a good um project so that's where we started at this is just a simple decal i bought off etsy not necessary but i think it's really cute and um i can link the etsy shop below because they were so nice and easy to work with and i really liked them they were fast shipping they got it to me in like two days so let's open it up real quick. This door, just so you know, in case you've ever, probably never seen a pop-up, um, or if you have, this door actually stores up there. So it only comes down when we pop it all the way Here's where the up. door goes, right there. Yeah, it goes on those tracks. And this can come down and it can just be a screen door. This is just removable wallpaper. Nine bucks off of Amazon. I just thought I added some fun color and um, just wanted to add something to it. Now, this door is, it has a spring so it automatically closes so you can't really ever prop it open if you didn't want it up i would just leave it up and you just want to leave this open but come on in okay so it's still sort of in pop down mode i mean i don't have the beds made i don't have all this other stuff but you guys can get the gist of it i wanted to show you sort of the few things that i did in here the biggest thing most time consuming thing was painting these cabinets. They what were. What color were they before? This color. I left this because I was so worried about scratches and the paint coming off that I left this top part because I knew we used this for luggage and other things like that. So, um, the biggest thing if you were ever going to pop a paint, a pop up, paint a pop up, paint an RV, whatever, is primer, primer, primer. And then, if you're going to use a dark color like this, tint your primer. I don't know why I didn't tint it. I didn't even think about it. It took me five or six coats to totally cover the primer. I would also use a chalk paint. I did not use that. I used Sherwin-Williams sample size paint. I wouldn't recommend that again. Um, I think that's one reason it took so many coats is because it was a sample and it wasn't made the same way as the paint you normally get. So I wouldn't recommend that. Definitely... I'll show you the primer I used because I didn't sand anything. I didn't want to have to sand. This is a small space. I didn't want that all in my nose. But I would choose a chalk paint and then I will link the polyacrylic that I used on top. I tried a different polyacrylic and it scraped right off. And this one worked like a charm. So that took some time. This is a fridge. I painted over the fridge. A lot of people don't, but 
We don't it's really like, use that fridge a whole lot. No. There's not a whole lot you can put in there. No, and actually a few people that I follow, they put like their first aid kit in their fridge. So that's not a bad idea. This actually folds down. So whenever we aren't, this isn't in use, you'll see, that's why there's some paint chipping right here, is it folds over on itself. Um, I hate that some of the paint's already chipping. I think that that's something that you have to know. If you're gonna, you just need to be ready to do some touch-ups because I did all my work and all my homework and it still chips some. Not a big deal though. We chose not to redo the countertops. You can see a, a lot of people who have pop-ups, they redid this countertops. They actually would use like contact paper I didn't want to do that. I thought it was a nice neutral color. Not a big deal. Um, some people, I don't know if you can see this, Travis. This is just a T-strip. I would recommend redoing these. We haven't done that yet, though. So the next thing that I did was get these cushions recovered. So as y'all can see, this is a couch area. It can actually turn into a bed. I don't know if you can see this right here. This pulls out, and it provide some of the stability for the bed and this is the table that goes outside this provides the other stability for the bed now there used to be cushions all up here we chose not to use those one they took up a lot of space two whenever the children were trying to get in our bed like they always are their feet were getting on them and they were just ending up on the floor and it was just too much so we took all those back cushions out and I don't know if Travis threw them away or not. I didn't ask where they went, but they are no longer here. And it was also cheaper whenever I went to reupholster this. Now, I could have reupholstered it myself. I know I could have. I didn't want to. Um, I think it's tricky to do that. I watched a lot of videos on it. And it was just something that I wasn't really in the mood to try. And I didn't. Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend such a light color upholstery. But I like it. And I thought it was pretty. And... We maybe have three or four hundred dollars in it, which is a lot, but still not so much that it would just kill me to have to redo all of it. And uh, so, when this, when we're actually set up somewhere, all this is out of the way, and this yes. is just sitting area here. We don't use it as a table like you can use it or use it as a bed. It's just kind of sitting area, getting ready area for us. We always eat outside, so this table here, which is meant to set up in here to have a kind of like a a booth at a restaurant is kind of how it's set up we just put that table outside and there's our grill and stuff move that out of the way and this is just a nice little sitting kind of chill area right and in a pop-up you have to use every possible space for storage so before we bring it down because there's an opening under this table i stuff everything we can underneath there all of these have storage in on so these are of our pots and pans and I mean, a mix of everything. Um, the kids' melatonin. Do not go camping without that. I keep extra batteries, extension cords, anything you can think of. I sort of went and racked up at places like Roses or Dollar General. Just places where I knew that we could get stuff cheap and be able to leave it in here. Because, like Travis said earlier, we want to be able to get up and go. So, I don't want to be t packing toothpaste and toothbrushes and deodorant every time. So, all of our bathing, all those items are in here. The kids' items, I leave them in here. They stay in here. Um, this has a storage area underneath it, too. And Travis is right. Lift that up so we can... Oh, well, I can't really get to it because you're... So, so we, we can put bedding and stuff in there, in there, which is nice. Right. Whenever we first got this the first time, we actually left the table in here. And I don't know why we never even thought to take it out, but I had seen another pop-up camper where they didn't put the table in here and it opens it up so much more so i thought oh well the kids will need it to play games no they can sit in their bed we can put something on there where they can play games so if you have a table like this in your pop-up i highly suggest putting it outside and seeing how much more you like it because it really made a huge difference and you don't need those back cushions if you're not using this for a bed it opened this space up so much more so i put some throw pillows you don't really sit in here a whole lot but if you did it was comfortable enough one more thing while I'm right here. Let's see this sink right here, and this is a, a can, can you lift that up? This is a little stove or whatever. We don't ever really use this. We're always cooking outside, and I have an outdoor kind of little portable fish cleaning sink. Problem using this sink, it works fine, but um, 
it doesn't completely drain and so when you fold this table down you get water when on you're the floor. good to go you have to put a towel on the floor so we don't use this sink unless we would absolutely have to use it and uh, you can take this this picks up really easily and goes outside and hangs on the outside of the camper but we have our own um, grilling and cooking equipment so we just kind of leave it as it is but they're both functional they both work and we could use them if we had to we actually bought a chopping board cover for this so that gives you more space to put things right um whenever you're actually camping you realize you need a lot more functional space to put things hold things things like that we haven't really had to come up against that too much we'll have to show you how we actually store stuff when we go camping but i've seen a lot of great videos of people having things hanging and things like that. I think that'd be great if you don't have small children. We have children who are also monkeys. So I think that's not for us, not a great thing for what we would wanna do, but for other people it works great. The other small things I did was rip down all these curtains that were in here. Before there were, you can see, I couldn't, some people act like these were easy to get off of. They were not. So there's this little kind of frilly we'll have to show you some brown pictures. curtain stuff up here. It's awful. And uh, yeah, it, it looked like it was from back in the early 90s. Uh, so rip that down and then. And I had, so I thought about, oh, let me try to re-sew the track to the back of the new curtains. I don't know, Travis, can you see this? This is the old track. I can't get these off. I don't know how, I cannot figure out. So I originally was gonna sew to the back of these. I was gonna Velcro. Don't do any of that. Let me tell you, what you need to do, we'll have to link these. Ikea sells these, Amazon sells them, these little clips. They will go on the track just like this and hold any curtain that you have. Now, you think you may not need a curtain, but you do. For light purposes, for changing purposes, all those things. So, I would, what I should have done, I didn't do, is if you can get blackout material but put behind your curtains, do that. Buy blackout curtains. I didn't. This is one, two curtain panels that I bought from Target and cut up and sewed together to cover this space and this space. But I should have gotten blackout material. See, these are coming off the track some. Um, now for right here, I did it two different ways. You don't really need this curtain, but it is kind of not, I thought it wouldn't be functional, but it is more functional than you think if you have small children. It's nice to sort of close it off so if we're on our phones or watching a movie or something over here that they don't see the light. So right here, I actually got a tension rod and then bought circular hooks that have clips on them. And I clipped the curtain to that. We had, I can't really get to it because of this. Let me see if I can get over here. It's sort of, it was dipping in the center. So I had to push it behind here. Um, I had a little trouble with it, but it really smoothly goes back and forth. Close it and open it really easily. I got these from Walmart. This is actually a shower curtain I cut and redid. So I would, if you're looking for new stuff to put right here where your curtains are, Get a shower curtain or get something that's already semi-sewed unless you're just really good centrist, which I'm not. The other biggest tip I would give is if you're going to pop up, buy 10, 15, 20, 30 of these. This is called damp red. Keep it in here all the time. When you're camping, when you're not camping, whatever. This one, I have two of these in here. This one is filled with water. You know, and if, if it wasn't in here... It would be in here on here it would start mildewing in here so it is so important that you get these dehumidifiers this damp red a lot of people use the um dollar tree brand travis has just gone to lowe's so those may work just as well all right and then the last thing we did honey let's tell them about the floors here okay so we redid the floors this is the cheapest easiest update you could do the lighting's a little bad in here they're a little more gray than what this looks like. That yellow light makes them look, maybe that, here we go. That, that's more kind of the color they are. This is stick and peel floor, vinyl flooring. $25 or maybe $30 a box. A box I think would have done this room if I would have been a little bit more careful with my cuts, but I wasn't because I was learning and sometimes we had to make multiple cuts. But this could have been a $30 update. I think it ended up costing us 50 because we had to buy two boxes. I didn't do anything to the floor that was before. This There's linoleum underneath this. It's like yellow. I just cleaned it. And then I started sticking this floor down. Um, my brother helped me. He was so nice to help. 
because I couldn't quite figure out the corners and there were a lot of corners. Now, some people have said, oh, it comes up. So let me show you real quick. So like, don't look how it's not perfect. Areas like that, it's a little tricky to work around. Uh, got this carpeted step here. We hadn't really figured out what to do about okay. that. But, I should have ripped it out, but I couldn't figure out how to rip it out. Yeah, without making a big mess. So we right. just kind of left that there. Exactly. But anyway, it took what, about an afternoon? To lay the floor? Yeah. Oh yeah, three hours max. And I, it wouldn't have taken that long, except we just did a few cuts wrong. So that was the quickest update for sure. Okay, so those are the things we have done and a few mm -hmm. things that we're planning on doing. Uh, none of this was super time consuming. You just kind of had to be patient with it. Come out here when we could do it. You know, at night after the kids were put to bed and come yes. out here and just work on a little bit of the time. The nice yes. thing about having this covered barn here is, you know, if right. even if it's raining or something, we can still work on it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and don't have to worry about getting wet or ourselves getting wet. So, uh, you know, it's just, just one little piece at the time. I feel like a camper is one of those things you're always working on it a little bit, trying yeah. to improve, especially when you buy a used one. Mm -hmm. So we're always thinking of new kind of new things to make the camping life a little easier. Learning new stuff uh, that you didn't know that you needed to know. Yeah, or how to, ways to be able to store more stuff in here so it's right. even more kind of just hitch it up, ready to go kind right. of deal. Yeah. yeah. The next thing I want to get to is having the boys a camp wardrobe. So I have their clothes packed and ready in the camper at all times. Yeah. So that's going to be the next thing, you know, just some play clothes. So there is one project that we still want to do. Um, we love a pop-up, but they're only one small thing. The greatest thing about a pop-up is that you can let down the windows and still feel like you're outside if you wanted to when the weather's cool. So where you're sleeping, it could still feel like you're sleeping in a tent. But that's also a bad thing about a pop-up is that the light and the noise and the heat come right through that canvas and that screen. Not, not very, not any insulation at all. None, actually. none. I mean, this is a tent with an AC in it, mm -hmm. you know, it's basically. So I have read a lot of reviews, done a lot of research. Hold it up. Man. And I found this, I don't know if you can see it. It's um. called Reflectex, Reflectex, Reflectex. I don't know. You can get it off Amazon. I found it at Lowe's. They have this height and then they have one double the height. I bought the shorter one because I wanted to be able to make less cuts. And so what I'm gonna do, you want me to show them or you want me to talk about it? Just tell them what you're okay. gonna do. I'm gonna put these at the end of the bunks. So in each window, there's three windows in the bunks. I'm gonna cut it to shape and then we're gonna put it between the vent and the screen. So it's gonna help one, keep it cooler in there or we can flip it around and then it'll help keep it warm during the cold time. It just provides some insulation, but it'll keep it darker in there so the boys don't wake up at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. and it keeps some of the noise out because if Travis is right here talking and I'm in there, I can hear everything that they're chatting about, which is fine. Not a big deal, except um, when kids keep wanting to come out and hang out too, you know, you want them to go to bed. So we're hoping this will just give us some insulation and provide some coolness and darkness and really help um, just make it a little, you know, more insulated in there. I guess I've already said that, but. Yeah, yeah, so reduce the noise reduce the light because uh while well, when you're camping it's fun to see the sunrise <laughs> some mornings you'd like to sleep past 6 30 <laughs> and our kids when that light starts coming through they're they up. We up. up and crunk and ready to go so maybe <laughs> we can delay that maybe 30 minutes every now and then just so we can get an extra 10 little minutes a little bit of sleep i'd be happy with 10 minutes they're up looking for their friends at 5 30 in the morning and I'm like, you guys gotta go back to sleep. Yeah, we're the only ones in this whole campground <laughs> awake and y'all waking everybody else up. So. Except that seven year old man walking to Chihuahua. I feel like he was always up. So, we'll hope you enjoyed seeing all of our uh, improvements we've done and planned improvements so far. Yep. Like I said, we've got lots of good camping videos coming up. Lots of trips planned where we'll be doing just some general camping videos. Hopefully some good sightseeing and also those campground reviews that I know everybody uh, wants to see. So yeah. hope you guys enjoyed this one. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button so you get notified yep. every time we come out with a video. And we'll see you guys next time on Pop-Up Life. See ya.